like my shit was gremlins like <laughs> you could not like i can't <laughs> that's the quote right there my shit was gremlins <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's all i have that's like, it Hello, welcome to Your Favorite Movie is Racist. I'm Chris. I'm Tani. I'm Bob. And we are two blacks and a Mexican here to give our non-expert opinion on movies we love that might be racist. (laughs) Um, We actually wrapped the season of this show a few months ago, but we really wanted to do a Christmas special, a holiday special, (laughs) whatever you want to call it, a special special. To close out this uh, beautiful year we've had. (laughs) (laughs) This uh, one for the ages. This uh, quintessential year. Uh, You know, it's we got our Christmas sweaters on. We're here, Mm -hmm. y'all. Just like everybody else, we're here. You know, what what more (laughs) more can we ask for? (laughs) So the, the whole idea of this show is that we dive into the movies that we love. We explore what we love about those movies. And then we uh, have a little conversation about the things that may not hold up in 2020, 2021, this new (laughs) era that we're in where um, folks are getting canceled left and right for things that, uh, that uh, have happened in the past and were once deemed acceptable. Um, And so we thought, Hey, what better movie to talk about in this holiday season? than a uh, true uh, family film (laughs) of bringing people together um, to deal with a common enemy. Uh, (laughs) Gremlins. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Gremlins uh, was directed by Joe Dante, came out in 1984, stars Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, and uh, uh, Jonathan Banks, Mike Ehrmantraut from Breaking Bad. He's in this. <laughs> it's funny. I was watching, um, what is it, Beverly Hills Cop, and he was in there, and like I was like, "Is that Mike?" And I don't remember him. Be- I don't remember him being in that. Like, yeah, but he's in that, and then he was in this. We're like, "What the hell?" It's like, "What's going on?" This dude's in like all these eighties movies. <laughs> he's oh, just popping shit. in. He's just popping yeah. in, uh, and very different character <laughs> than we used to see. Yeah, as uh, but uh, so. I don't know, you know, this the, the plot of this movie is that uh man gets creature, furry creature from Asian man <laughs> <laughs> takes furry creature home, antics ensue. So uh <laughs> so <laughs> what do we love about gremlins? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like Gremlins, like what, 1984 you said? What was like, I was five? Like, were you guys born yet? I don't know. I was born I was that year. Negative. Uh, negative. Three. <laughs> Miles was a wee egg. So you have to understand. <laughs> With a little beard. A little beard on the egg. The cap. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that. All right. <laughs> No, but this is like you guys have to understand like what it was like to be like a five, four year old child when fucking Gizmo came out. Like just like, oh my god. Like <laughs> I wanted the Gizmo. Like it was like the pain of not having Gizmo was real. And they bought me, like my family bought me a Gizmo. What is the first thing Tani did with the Gizmo? Can you guess? Put water on it. Put water on it. <laughs> <laughs> Dump the water on it. Fucked it all up. Fucked up the the plushy hair. Like I messed it up. Um, but no, there's my so gizmo- many water damaged gizmos out there. I there's so know. many. Oh, water- yeah. I had the plushy. I don't know what happened to the plushy, but I still actually have. And God, I wish I would have brought it over. But um, I still have my little figurines from that whole era. And I had like a gizmo that was this big. That's like a figurine. I had a stripe. I had the stripe Mogwai stripe, and I had the like, Gremlin stripe. My cousin Mark, they that year, like everybody just got gremlin presents apparently, but like that year, <laughs> like it was just a gremlin themed holiday. Everybody's gifts was ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, 
they bought him one of those like they they had like there was like a full like full body size stripe and it's that shit was expensive and like all of a sudden like no one could find stripe and they found him in the garage and my grandma's the back of the garage with his arms torn off because my cousin was so afraid of him he ripped the arms off and threw him in the back <laughs> he couldn't yeah. deal with it so gizmo let, let me just like and, and to this day like i i had the gizmo you know how he drives the car mm-hmm. like the barbie car or whatever the fuck it is at the end i had that i had the plush gizmo i had the figurines i had the movie that went with the book like my shit was gremlins like <laughs> you could not like i can't <laughs> <laughs> That's the quote right there. My shit was gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I have. That's like, it. There was no criticism. Like I wasn't looking at it with any sort of critical eye. It was just like this was this like cultural phenomenon that I suddenly was in and like I soaked it completely in and it became part of my soul. So don't ask me to say anything bad about this movie. I was gonna say the interesting thing is like I I'm actually I saw the second one first, so I, I didn't see this one Same. until <laughs> Which that's weird. Yeah, like I didn't see this one until like way after I don't even remember when, but I just know I saw the second one first, which so that one has like a special place in my heart, like specifically like <laughs> it's and it's ridiculous. way more it's way more ridiculous too than yeah. this one. Like this one is, is ridiculous too, but that one like takes it up a notch for sure. Like I don't know, like, I, I just, I, I, it, this is, like, one of those ones where, I don't know, how can you not like Gizmo? Like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know anybody that doesn't like Gizmo. He's just such a, so you, adorable, you can, like. You it, can dislike like, Howie Mandel, but you don't, you can't dislike Gizmo. You can't dislike Gizmo. <laughs> and, the, and the thing that, I, the thing that's cool about him is, like, he's, he's, like, a really well-behaved child, like. <laughs> he's like yeah, yeah like he's just chilling know, yep. he's sitting there you don't have to do give him a little coloring book give him a little tablet and he'll just sit there and play with his keyboard he's making beats on the keyboard i'm like this is a really good kid like he's and then the other gremlins are like your friend's house that you go over like where they kids are bad as fuck like they won't like sit down they're like tearing up the house they're getting hurt you're afraid to bring your kid around them because you don't want your kid to get hurt <laughs> They're doing the most like shit humanly possible, <laughs> gremlinly but... possible. Like they're, they're they're doing the most, and he's just so well behaved. I'm like, look at him. He's just sitting there playing the piano, playing the Casio, coloring, <laughs> just... watching TV, singing a nice <laughs> little tune every now and then. Like this is, I like this guy. Yeah. Like he, like how could you not want him around? Like he's like the best company. Which I guess like why nobody really cared that he's you know a new species or whatever in the entire movie is like <laughs> what he's the a- fuck. He's so well behaved. They're all, like, oh yeah, he's a mogwai, and I'm like, does anybody anybody gonna delve into that just for a second? Like, what yeah. the fuck does a mogwai? Because he has good manners, <laughs> man. Like he, you yeah. know, it, and he has self control. Like again, like they're like, hey, you want something to eat, Gizmo? And he's like, nah, I'm no, I'm good. Like, look at, look <laughs> yeah. at him. He yeah. has he has morals, <laughs> everything. He's just a all around good guy. Like yeah, like I can not like Gizmo. Like yeah. It's, but it's amazing. Uh, and we had a cat named Gizmo too. Like uh my uh my grandmother actually she had like a cat, like she had a Siamese cat and his name was Gizmo and we uh, it was because of this movie for sure. Like it was one My cousin my, my cousins like they they told the they they were going to have a baby. Like the my uncle and his wife and they told the the son that they already had my cousin Mark, the one who ripped the arms off of Stripe. They were like, you can name the baby. Do you guess? Can you guess what he, name Gizmo. he picked? His name was Gizmo. And for <laughs> <laughs> for a large for a large part of that child, his name was Andrew, like the the kid that actually got born. But like for a long time, we called him. Everybody called him Gizmo. Hey, like that kid's up, name Giz? was <laughs> the kid, his name was Gizmo. That was functionally his name. That's what's up. Yeah. I dig that. I mean, that's the thing. It's so, it's so iconic. And uh, I guess what I can bring up, I'll bring up, a, a, there's three things that are coming to mind for me. One, I I kind of love the dad. He's useless. <laughs> but you know what? The, co- the coffee scene, the, the coffee scene made me kind of love the dad. Because like, 
like he's he knows his inventions are ridiculous and that scene sort of lets you see it when she's just like we can't drink this and he's like what you mean this you can't drink it it's just something charming about him and i'm like i could see why he's kind of a salesman i didn't buy him as an inventor as much as a salesman it was weird to me that the idea that he invented this stuff and was selling it i feel like it makes more sense if he was just a salesman but uh but i liked him you know it was funny that to me that he was so absent for the whole scenario that was happened that he caused <laughs> <laughs> that he right. brought upon everyone. <laughs> and it's like, I should hate him for this, but I just, I don't know. He's funny. Um, the other thing was the, uh, the, 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 the other two things I'm thinking of kind of tie together, which is the practical effects is one, which is are amazing to this day. Like to this day, yeah. like these, <laughs> these are um, the, like the, animatronics to stop motion to like all the different sort of transitions to the way that the gremlins are presented is really clean. There's really good cinematography around that stuff. Like when you see stripe in the cabinet thing and then he like backs away and then you see the hole in the wall, you know, you can obviously figure out how they did that. But the fact that they thought to do it that way is really impressive. And there's so many things like that stripe on the skateboard at the end is, is like, I was just watching. I was like, man, this is so cool. Like, it's like, it looks real. It's like tangible. You know what I mean? And beautiful CGI nowadays is beautiful. But there's a there's there's still an uncanny valley thing that tells me, like, I can't touch that. You know, and this this has that tangibility, um, the disgusting eggs, all that. Um, and then the last thing ties into that, which is the swimming pool scene, to me, is the coolest scene in the whole movie. Because the storytelling is so well paced. I actually, I took a screenwriting class years ago and Gremlins was one of the examples that was used for uh, good storytelling because just the structure of the story works so well. And uh, when by the time uh, the, the, the Gremlin jumps in the swimming pool, we by this point know exactly what that means. We know exactly how terrifying that is. We've seen them kill people already. And it it's really cool looking like the the water all going crazy and the steam and, and going out of the just running out of there like <laughs> that sound like sounds like cats fighting yeah. it sounds yeah. like a cat sound which is really interesting and he did mm-hmm. like a cannonball into the cannonball made it even he more cannon- <laughs> he even, i think he even goes like this which is ridiculous <laughs> And that one of my fucking favorite things about this movie is how fucking funny it is. Yeah, like these things are running around killing people and we still like them. It's like, definitively they're... a horror comedy, like mm-hmm. great, great oh, yeah. mix of both. The horror yeah. is definitely there. It's well, it sets up those horror scenes really well. Um, but the comedy is just like <laughs> so spot great. on. Because yeah. they're doing like all this stuff, like especially like when you go to the scene where they're in the bar, <laughs> yeah. and it's funny because so many gags, it's so many. It's like and just she's just there, like gags. serving them drinks and right. stuff. Like I guess it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> Why are you there? The fucking flash dance gremlin, and they're like, they show him like. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the Gremlins are the prime example of when you consume way too much pop culture because they're doing <laughs> yeah. way too much. How shit. do they absorb? Like, this is my question. How do they, how do they yeah. take all of our culture in within a couple of hours of being born as Gremlins? Yeah, <laughs> like, within a couple just... of hours, they were like doing everything that we know, but like all the like inside jokes that the a Phantom human of the like, Opera. in America would know. Yeah, it's yeah. Just like how do y'all even know all of this? Yeah, and that was before i mean like you think about the timing the 1984 like you know that was pre even back to the future like like it was just you think about that's what every everything's super meta now <laughs> yeah. um yeah. but even like pop culture comedy that that really blew up with the simpsons and stuff like that that hadn't come along yet um and so it's just neat to think about how they executed that um also phoebe cates is great in this movie <laughs> Her, uh, so I, I was going to watch this movie with my kids and then I stopped myself and I told, uh, we like literally started the movie. And then I was like, uh, I looked over at my wife and was like, Oh, you know what? I don't know if they could watch this. And she was like, why? And 
I was like, it has nothing to do with the violence or anything like that. And she was like, oh, yeah, sure. And then we kind of got the kids off of it. They really wanted to watch it. And we're like, we'll watch it another time. But it's because of her uh, monologue, BBB <laughs> Kate's monologue. I was like, I ain't ready to have that conversation with my kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's the most it's the most hilarious, dark, disturbing, but like it's hilarious. Awful. But a hilarious story. <laughs> Which is very well spoofed in the second movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? Oh, yeah, She's yeah. like yeah. Lincoln. There was a man. She had a whole yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And they spoof it because it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. But apparently, she did. She pulls it off though. Apparently, that speech was supposed to go to a different character, and uh, it was going to be like a McDonald's oh. manager, and they, they were going to have him give that speech and then get killed. And then the, <laughs> Joe Dante was like, "I don't want to give that to a character that's just going to die. Like, I want this to add to the backstory of an existing character." Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> they gave her that monologue, <laughs> and I guess the studio didn't want it in. But it's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's it is. really weird. It doesn't serve. Like, it never pays off in any way. Like, you never no. actually see her because you think when you see the way she is at the beginning. And then you see, like, that's that story that at the end there will be some sort of button that sort of says, like, oh, she likes Christmas now, but nah. Nope. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, too, like, the the score in this. Like, I always remember that score, like, the the music in this. It's great. I, I don't know why. It, it is, I just, it's one of the, like, Christmas. it's not even, like, yeah. it's not even one that, like, people, like, but that, the Gremlins, like, theme song that just mm-hmm. plays, like, da, da, it, da, da, it, yeah, da, I just da, always da, remember da, that song. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. 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 I just always remember that. Like, I, I I don't even think it ever really gets brought up in, like. Who did the score? Do we know? Do we, do we, do, did we look this I up? I didn't. Know. I didn't even look that up. <laughs> I just thought about that right now, though. No, but you're right. It's so it's so good. It never gets really brought up ever, but it's like super memorable. Yeah. You can sing it. Everybody can sing it. Yeah. And then um I mean, even just like beyond that though, like the way it opens is like Christmas, the snow coming down. It opens yeah. on that song. You know, it's just the sound is great. Well, in the and the use of uh, "Do you hear what I hear?" What that was really clever. Yes. <laughs> Do you hear what I? Hear? You just so hear them like good. tackling over it. Yeah. Soundtrack. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith. Yep, that's what I got too. I was trying to figure out if that was right. Yeah, Jerry Goldsmith. But uh, the gremlin the kill humor. slash death scenes are are and amazing. Here, and let's talk about that because, like, I, <laughs> Huckleberry always does this thing where he's like does anyone die in this movie like he can't like he has to know so that he's like prepared for it i'm all no just i think there's one death and what i was thinking of was mrs deagle like i didn't even remember the teacher at all yeah yeah, yeah. and then i start watching it and i'm like oh shit that's death oh that's death too oh that, mrs. that guy Deagle's died death for sure is so cool to me yeah. she deserves because that shit it's just so perfectly set up you see her ride down the thing and then they yeah you know, she's terrible She's such a <laughs> fucking evil bitch the, that I'm I like. Would, I would say that the teacher sort of like, what was you doing? Like, why would you reach under a desk? Don't without, do that. Like, like, that was yeah. more of a. What are you that doing? was more of like a poor decision. Like, yeah, that's more of a horror movie death. Like, yeah. this character <laughs> doesn't doing? deserve to die, but they're doing a stupid thing that's gonna get them killed. That's, gonna, yeah. that's clearly <laughs> like why. Like this thing that you don't know what it is first of all you don't know what it is you have no clue what this is like none of i think like when the dad brings it home i I think i laughed like audibly out loud because it like he's like yeah i want to get this for my son and then he gets it home and then he like reveals it or whatever and the first i feel like the first thing he does like what's his name like what's his name (laughs) so i don't care like what is that shit (laughs) (laughs) what What you mean what's his name like oh that's That, that's that's such a irrelevant question. Like you just brought a new species into the house. A new yeah. species. The rules are such an afterthought. The dad's like, he, what? Because what's the first? What's the thing he wanted to do? And the dad stopped him from doing it. Uh, was it a water photo, or something? They, they take a photo. Oh, they, they oh, take yeah, yeah. yeah. Take a picture He's like, oh yeah, yeah. They don't like light. Oh yeah, that'll kill him. Sunlight will kill him. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's a couple other things you should know. This is <laughs> yeah, like, like, were you like so see cavalier. This? Why was he so cavalier with the I guess rules, he doesn't though? know like, that that. that in his head, they probably mean the rule. Like you think about usually, if you bring a pet home and you don't do what you're supposed to do, the pet will die, and that's what you're worried about. 
right? Yeah, exactly. But for him, and so in his head, it's probably like, oh yeah, this is how you take care of it. And he doesn't know that not following these rules could get everybody killed. <laughs> Yeah, but even even point. after the rules are broken, he's still pretty cavalier about him. Like, yeah. you got him wet? What is that's what happened when you got him wet? Like, oh, he's not even like <laughs> mad that he got him wet. He's just yeah, he's yeah. like, man, every kid in America <laughs> one, one of these. Like, well, that's that's, that's, that's I guess that's what's clever about making him the type the character he is, is that like that's actually like probably within the context of his character, a logical reaction. Nobody's oh, reaction yeah. to the creatures themselves is all that logical but like within the context of his characters like yeah i guess he probably would be like <laughs> yeah. yeah about even it. the two cops like when the santa claus is coming out the house they're like what's all that stuff on him and they're just kind of sitting up there like yo why are y'all not like i, I just don't understand like <laughs> they the just leave him there to die <laughs> yeah they just yeah, dipped do. like yeah nah we cool it's just gonna they're just yeah, we ain't cops. Jonathan like, Banks, uh, Jonathan Banks is just like I don't. I want to go back to the station. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody is concerned. Like their their like their acknowledgement for like what these things were like bothered me the entire. I was like, I don't remember this, but nobody is terrified by it. The only yeah. one that was like. Yeah, terrified immediately is the mom who springs into immediate <laughs> action and takes yeah. out like three or four of them <laughs> out the gate. I'm like, yes, she was on point. That's mom status. Point. That's mom's yeah. dealing with problems. And her that's that's one of my favorite scenes too. Is that like Do you hear what? I yeah, mean? all the way through to the tree attacking her. It was just like such a cool like set piece, you know. And she's stuff. like, fucking, are you fucking serious? I have to deal with this. I'm trying to make cookies over here. Fucking, that's she's like the, the mom's story right there. And she's so patient with her insane husband. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> like, when she tries to use the remote her to answer the phone and it doesn't husband. work. And then she answers it by hand and he's like upset with her that she didn't use the remote. Yeah. She's just like, oh, honey, no, yeah, it, it works yeah. fine. I was just she's like, so yeah. Patient. yeah. <laughs> she's just so, she's taking care of his male psyche in so many ways. She's the real hero in this movie is the mom. Like. The <laughs> Legit. Because the for, re- for the record, Billy, like, okay, so I like Billy up until like the final set piece. Billy was ap- just <laughs> he just was absolutely useless in the climax of the yeah, movie. Pointless. Like he was getting wrecked by Stripe, and it was just like, <laughs> how many times? Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> Billy gets knocked down so many times, and you would think he was like sixty five because he always like struggles <laughs> to get up. Like he's all I, how many? T- I didn't count how many times I saw him like. <clears throat> And like, <laughs> and, and, and that literally like is is so that Stripe can be effective because like, yeah. <laughs> like when he gets shot because he you know uh, even when Stripe comes at him with the chainsaw and I'm like how did you end up in this position like exactly. reevaluate your choices up to this point where you are on the ground covered in stuff like <laughs> all you have is this tiny bat and stripes <laughs> coming at you with a chainsaw <laughs> and i kept thinking i was like oh mistakes like, who's gonna... were made and so you know uh kate saves him and then gizmo saves him and then like like he literally <laughs> is just there to see the light hit stripe he doesn't do anything <laughs> i'm just like well i'm glad we could watch this movie through billy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's so oblivious. Like he, he just like he's a terrible. Like if he was supposed to be the hero, like which he's not. Like they didn't really do a good job of like portraying him to be like the hero. It's just clueless. Like, a, <laughs> like okay, yeah. Well, I don't. Yo, give me the mom, man. Put the mom in here, man. Like, put her in this position. I feel like. She could take out like way more than like he he would be able to. It was probably a studio note to have just the likable doe eyed young guy be the protagonist, you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. like they didn't have anything for him to do. I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like an he's like there an older go. Elliot from ET type of thing. <laughs> yeah, Although Elliot sure. was more Elliot, Elliot was, was like way yeah. more capable though. Yeah, like, he, he did like. <laughs> He like he laid pretty traps. much yeah yeah like, Elliot was actually yeah let me let me put some respect on Elliot's name yeah, I take Elliot that back. Is the truth yeah <laughs> anything else we want to say that we love about Gremlins before we transition gosh I just want to talk about Mr. Futterman real quick though because like my whole life until yeah. Gremlins two came out I was like they died 
They got fucking snowplowed. How do you survive getting run over by a snowplow? And then all of a sudden he was in Gremlins too. And I was like, eh, I don't care. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. that was so um, random. But yeah. um, but Mr. Futterman, the one who um, who introduces the concept of gremlins, because he was in World War II, right? Yeah. So he's kind of important yeah. in that way. But yes. he's like, you get the sense that he says a lot of racist shit when no one's around. Yeah, that's why I was saying <laughs> I was kind of saving him for the second segment. Yeah, okay, sorry. Because <laughs> I have thoughts on Mr. Futterman. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, Mr. Futterman. I I can't think of anything else though from the movie other than just like how fucking brilliant and hilarious it is when they're singing every single little tiny vignette in the bar, like is fucking amazing and ridiculous. And it's every such a wild scene, and every <laughs> single little tiny like vignette in in the fucking movie theater. Hi ho, hi ho! Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's and it's weirdly yeah. tense. Like like. When he almost when the when the uh, ski mask gremlin almost shoots <laughs> Kate in the face and it was just like Jesus, yeah. <laughs> she just like juked him what out. I, what's going on? Like I'm showing this to my kids, being like, "This is fucking a Christmas movie." Like I like you know, and it's just it, but it delivers like on the every peril level. Feels yeah. Super real, like that's yeah. what I dug about it. The peril feels extra real when they get out of the car and everything downtown is just coming down on yep. fire. That's such a cool like. I was like, dang, this feels. This like is like legit. these th- these fucking little creatures are legit gonna fuck shit up, but like <laughs> they're literally they're literally <laughs> that's, that's what I said. Like they're like badass kids, man, because they the comedy there like is. Okay, yeah, this is funny, but also this motherfucker could like hurt my son, like <laughs> yeah. if he, you know, like if if his mom ain't like watching him, like carefully, like it, it's like they they're like they just feel like kids to me because they're doing so much like silliness. They're like, just naughty. They're, they're just like, yeah, they're, they're just extreme naughty. Yeah. Yeah. naughty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it's the best. I don't, I, I don't even know if it's to the point of like evil either. Like no. some of them is just like, yeah, we're just doing stuff like this cause. Can you think of a movie where it's just naughtiness? Like where you're just dealing with complete naughtiness? Yeah. <laughs> Can you think of anything? <laughs> yeah, they're just like they're just trying to like uh fulfill their own like joy. Like this brings them joy. Like just do do whatever makes you happy. Like is like their <laughs> motto basically. They're just doing whatever they feel like doing. And it's like, I don't even know if they're really cognizant of the fact that they're hurting people in some of these situations. It's just like, yeah, we're just having a good time. Like we're they're having just doing their shit. Yeah. 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 I mean, it reminds me, it reminds me of that old, uh, I think it was, was it Louis CK? Somebody told the joke where, and it's a kid thing. I was like, I can see my kids doing it where he's, he was like with his sister and she was like, had this, she had like a glass of wine and you could tell it was just, he's like, you could tell it's just all she had in this world at this point. It's all she has. <laughs> And this little three-year-old kid walks up to a clump of dirt and just throws it in the wine. <laughs> just like, yep, that's where that goes. And like, that's that's kids. That's also gremlins. Like, yeah. I can see a kid or a gremlin doing that exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, they not they're not necessarily trying to be. They just they don't know that this is like the worst shit ever to do to somebody. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, this would be interesting to try out. Like, let's just yep. fuck. this just fuck this shit they up. They got no home training. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Badass kids, man. I'm yeah. telling you. Exactly. That's all Bay-based it is. kids. Bay-based kids. Bay-based yeah. kids. It, uh, this'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's racist about gremlins? Uh the magical Chinese man? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. It's kinda messed I'll up. I'll give you that. I'll give you like, that. like fr- fresh, th- fresh out the gate, man. Like they just, it kicks off with that. Like they don't waste no time. Plumes of smoke over here. Yeah, like, what's going yes. on? Yeah. Steam. And I'm like, is Chinatown? We're still in California, like, right? Have you like, ever like, been to Chinatown? Like <laughs> I go to China. I've been to Chinatown. Plenty the of only times. thing that was accurate is is that uh, either a, a young a kid or a, a young woman will just come up to you and tell you to follow them to whatever place it is it's usually not like a mystical art shop it's usually a place where you can buy a new purse or something uh that's <laughs> never happened to me it actually happened to me in new york we went to new york and uh, the lady was like follow me and we're like 
Okay. And then Am we I going to get a Mogwai out of this? Because yeah. otherwise I'm not interested. My wife got a really nice Louis Vuitton purse that day. <laughs> 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 that was that on that uh, Dave Chappelle uh, at Ship to Fell show where he has an episode where he goes into that like uh, ancient, like Asian thing, like uh, store. <laughs> and he walks in. He was like, yeah, what can I do to help you? He's like, uh, do you have any gremlins? And he's like, no, never mind. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, like, <laughs> you have any gremlins? <laughs> I love Chappelle. But yeah, it's, 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 I was like, yo, they really like, cause I mean, when I go to Chinatown, it's pretty much just like great ass, like restaurants all over the place. Like, I, I, like I've never ran into a magical, first of all, I've never met a magical motherfucker in my life before <laughs> in general, like Asian it's or true. not. It's I just, true. It's true. Just Asian or not. Waiting on that. Yeah. I just haven't met a magical. I'm person open yet. to it. I'm open I'm to cool it. I'm cool with it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm open to it. I'm actually, but, I'm actually <laughs> hopeful for it. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm cool with that. I would be accepting of that. Like if someone was just magical, I'd be like, <laughs> I mean, there's weirder shit here. Like, yeah, you have powers. I, I'm, I expect that. Like, you I feel powers. like there's somebody out there with powers. I'm for just sure. glad to know that you're open to it, Miles. Yeah, I think that that's <laughs> out there. So, the fact that they go there though, and like the, with the whole scene, I'm like, damn, they just straight out the gate, like they just going for it, like with the with the Asian stereotypes, like and they all the way, absolutely, and they give him like the one dead eye, like he has like a dead eye. I'm pretty sure that's not real. Yeah. Like I'm guessing no. that guy's not does not have an actual accent. Like he doesn't sound like he does. So it's very like Orientalism, which yeah. is. You know, as we've discussed on the show previously, problematic. To pull on that thread a little bit. <laughs> let's talk about Mr. Futterman. <laughs> so, <laughs> to me, the real <laughs> twas xenophobia <laughs> killed the beast in this movie <laughs> because, like, here's the thing: this movie validates him. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he like hates yeah. foreigners. He's like those fucking he hates foreigners. Yeah, yeah, he hates foreigners like aggressively. <laughs> and by foreigners, it's like any, the, the, uh, the great other. And like, that's actually where the, the bad guys come from is from some foreign place. And then like, even in his moment of uh, what appears to be death, he's like shouting his validation. And the yeah. movie is not, the movie does not discount that at all. It's like, it? no, yeah, yeah. You, he's yeah. right. You should be afraid of foreign things because <laughs> look what happens. And like, I, I mean... <laughs> It's <laughs> it's so like obviously like it's all comedy, but like there is something to that whole like idea that that's where they get it is from a foreigner, uh-huh. and this guy is like uh, just just hella yeah, racist towards foreign foreigners. Cars, yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, you know, it's all about immigration. That's the theme of the movie. Is like build a wall, like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't let gremlins. Don't in. let gremlins. In. It's like for Don't. every Mrs. Deagle scene that is sort of anti-Trump, you also have a little bit of xenophobia, just to balance <laughs> things out. <laughs> Mrs. Deagle, she's such a fucking bitch. <laughs> Tawny's awful. trigger word is Deagle. For the record, God, I hate her. That's such a terrible name, too. Like a Deagle, you just look like a Deagle ass. Yeah, like... <laughs> Deagle. <laughs> Just look like a deagle, like yeah, I know, yeah. You, that's just like you have you have that deagle name, looking mug, deagle looking ass, yeah. Like <laughs> she definitely when she came into the bank, I was like, how could you be this evil of a person? Like I don't even know, like with what, her what? fucking like, stupid snowman head. She had two monologues about murdering his dog. Yeah, like <laughs> and which the she scene... felt like self righteous about too. Where like, that dog at? Where's where's the dog at? <laughs> I want to kill him. <laughs> Like, what? Yeah, I want to send them to the fucking factory. And then the the, the mom who's like, my my husband just like he's not going to get paid, and she's like, what oh, you bunch of deadbeats, you know, like, like <laughs> just like you fucking evil bitch. I hope you die by the end of this movie. I'm so glad when she dies. I told the boys, I was like, I don't care. She could go flying through the fucking sky. Like she's dead. That that's the only death that I like. I'm invested in that death. Like she needs to go. <laughs> no, nah, it was it was great. <laughs> it was very like satisfying, you know. And it's like interesting because 
<laughs> it's very clearly wants you to be a semi on the gremlin side at that point For in the sure. movie. Which is interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you should be with her because she's a terrible human being. She's like the first generation of like Karens or whatever, like <laughs> like yeah. just somebody that talked like super crazy and all and up in everybody's all stuff. up in everybody's everybody shit constantly, say the most crazy stuff, and then like. As soon as they get like confronted, it's like whoa, whoa, what? Oh, my heart. How are you? My yeah, heart. yeah. Oh my no, her God. the shot of her with her back to the door screaming is very reminiscent of Barbecue Becky with the phone, like <laughs> screaming. <Right. Yeah. laughs> like it's, it's definitely yeah, there's there's some there's some pre Karen. She's the prequel to the Karen type of situation. Well, so, another thing to bring up, which you know. I'll just say we're we're going to tease a new show at the end of this, and I think this ties into it in a way, is that this Gremlins, unfortunately, has the horror movie trope of the black guy dying first. Or only <laughs> the black. The or only, only the maybe, king. but yeah, I got yeah. Daryl. She, she, she took an L. She, yeah, that's um, true. There's a few, there's a few implied deaths, like you said, uh, but our uh, Mr. Hanson, the uh, science teacher, who, okay, for the record, you took <laughs> you have a creature that is multiplying when it gets wet that looks like nothing you've ever seen in your life and you went to your high school science teacher now billy we've established billy's a little yeah but you the soft. science teacher are like yeah i'll do some tests <laughs> wait wait what <laughs> That's not what science teachers do, bro. Like, listen, I remember my science teacher from high school. What kind of okay. test do you have the equipment to run? In you drawing blood and doing blood tests? Like, what are you doing with the blood? Like, what? Like, that's, that's not that's not even like within like like the parameters of like what his job is as a, a school like a, as a like a science teacher is not doing that. Even like maybe he's like a hobby. Like, okay, yeah, I'm just into this type of stuff. <laughs> My science teachers from high school is not doing experiments on trying to figure out what a new species is. Like, I, I just. Well, it falls into that universal science guy trope. Like, yeah, there's this idea just... in movies that if you're a science person in some way, you know all you the know, things. You know all the things. Kind of, you know, I was thinking of, um, and, I, and I think they poke fun at this in the, the faculty, like the Jon Stewart character. Like, I feel like that oh, was yeah. deliberately silly. Because yeah, I mean, like, you had John Stewart play. Yeah, so. because it's John Stewart. But it, the, like, yeah. I was thinking about that, going like, "What the like? What is the basis for this fucking guy drawing blood from a creature he's never seen before? Like, what is he going to do with it? He doesn't have any equipment. Like, where is he going to send the blood?" It's such a stretch. They did a they did a decent job of playing with that a little bit on Stranger Things, where the science teacher still seems a little clueless at least, and where he's like, I don't know, maybe we do but this. He, it, but, but it was actually kind of useful. Like the it was kind of useful. Yeah. It's like he yeah. knows this weird thing that. But that like that I could buy though that he would like know some even like just some biological stuff that uh, a science teacher you could would expect would know something about like like biology like okay the way the body works in the way or whatever type of like teacher they are science teacher the fact that you're there like doing experiments to test it like you're not doing experiments what are you bro. doing yeah <laughs> what are you doing, are you doing? like doing? <laughs> <laughs> you drew blood from it the palm of its hand <laughs> Right, wrong. You already wrong. Like, why would why would you? That's not even how you, I'm not. I know that. You know, that's not how you draw blood. Like, you know what I mean? And that syringe like, had so much air in it when it was draw, when you drawing the blood. Wow, air like, in the syringe. Like, yo, you like, have no clue what you're doing, bro. Like, go, go call some. You know what? Like, to to their defense, like, say this happens to you. Say you guys, somebody brings a gift to you in the next week. And it's a Mogwai. Who do you yeah. call? Like, I, I, I don't know who you call. I don't have. I'm gonna FBI, call my si but... high school science teacher. So. <laughs> so we can start doing some experiments. Right? I'm not calling and, anybody. And he was sitting there. So this guy. I mean, so yeah, we got our only only black guy. He's the science teacher who's terrible. And uh, <laughs> and then when it turns into a giant mutant oozing egg. You just cut the cage off around it and put it in a box. And put it in a box. <laughs> you I'm like, okay. At this point, that shit looks like the egg. That shit looks like the egg. The from alien, alien, exactly. Put it somewhere where it's not going to be able to get out and run around. And for the record, it looks like the egg from Aliens in a universe 
where in all likelihood alien the movie exists because (laughs) every other pop culture thing exists so you've seen like uh yeah no this is not gonna go well and then he he dies and uh it's and first of all here's the other question what is the fucking lethal substance that a tiny amount of it kills him like what is the why is that in the science class like what is it like what does he use and this this newborn this newborn knows how to use it (laughs) yeah it's like i don't even understand like i i was confused by that because i was like okay gizmo i if i see gizmo i'm like this this thing is pretty cute man like i can see (laughs) why you i can see why you would feel like it was harmless the moment that gizmo like reproduces more gizmos and then they turn into a nasty ass, dripping wet looking ass cocoon. I'm like, man, I don't, <laughs> yeah, this ain't cute. Like, it's like right. mucus. Yeah. Just like this a shit mucus. Ain't cute. Again, these are like kids. It's like when they're babies and like toddlers, they're cute and adorable and they're like fun. And then like after they come out of the cocoon, they like teenagers and shit. <laughs> And they're not cute no more. Like, Get out of my house. <laughs> they're not cute no more. They're like doing shit that you don't want them to do now. Like, it's accurate. It's accurate. Yeah. I mean, and uh, and so you got your, so you got your first black your your first death is a black guy, and and sort of it's a and and who will cry for him because Billy <laughs> like looks in there, he looks down, he's like oh dang, and then like yeah. nope, okay, and then he's on with his life. So you you have your uh you have your mystical Asian man, um and you have your xenophobic man who turns out to be right. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, yeah, Grimman's got some got some things going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I guess we could just sort of transition into the rating part of this, um, knowing all of these things are true. <laughs> How do we rate Gremlins? I it's a classic. I can't I can't not watch Grimly. Like I'm probably gonna watch it later. It's um it's so much fun and and despite all of those things, like and I and I do try to kind of point things out to my kids because it and it like maybe they're a little I don't know. I hope that I'm not exposing them to stuff that's totally inappropriate, but um this this movie's fun as hell. And it's like there's when you think about like sentimental Christmas movies and all that, like this one stands out as like a movie that you can watch and have fun and enjoy and not be sucked into, you know, the, the sentiment machine. Um, and I love it. And it's something that like from my, from my own childhood and this movie met has meant a lot to me since I was like four years old, five years old. So it's going to continue to be a classic in my house. Yeah. Same. Like I, I, I I mean, it's so, silly and ridiculous and just over the top that I mean do you really care like is there anybody really petitioning out there to get gremlins removed or whatever like from you know <laughs> wherever it's being streamed like it's gremlins man like I, I, gizmo I don't know like gizmo, <laughs> gizmo. gizmo man <laughs> Yeah, nah, like it, this. This one is like it's a classic, man. And I, I'm go. I haven't seen the second one in a long time. I, I just watched the first one for this. I have to go watch the second. one. Yes, like, please do. <laughs> we let me know when you're watching it because I will be watching it and we can text. <laughs> and it's laugh. so great. It's just like it's just like a good comedy. Like there is like some good tension there, where it's like there is some like points in this where I'm legit like this is kind of creepy. Like I don't even remember. I do remember stuff like from when I was a kid, like where I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of creepy. For the most part, I just thought it was funny as a kid. I never like was really scared of this movie or anything. I just always found it to be hilarious. So even as a kid, so there's stuff now that watching it, I'm like, damn, that that actually is kind of, yeah. When fucking Stripe pops out of that fountain and he's all. Yeah, that's 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 gross. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's good. Super nasty. (laughs) I mean, even just then like the cocoons like when they you go up in the attic and they're just in there and you're seeing that i'm like that i would be completely freaked out like and so it, it it's effective man so this is a classic like i don't i don't know how you could not like 
like every year I feel like I watch this. Like this is home alone. <laughs> I feel like I, I watch this all the time. So I was like, yeah, nah, this is this is a classic, dude. Da, and it's a da, terrible da, movie. Da, da. It's terrible. But it's great at the same time. <laughs> it's terribly awesome. Like it's it's brilliant. It's a brilliant yeah, movie. Yeah, it, it's like yeah. It's just like everything about it sparkles. Like there's just it's there's so much fun. It's just so much yeah. pure fun. It's one of those movies that where it's like I'm not supposed to really ask questions about this, just and go I, with don't. It. I don't. I yeah. don't like. I, we have to for the, obviously the sake of this podcast, but in real life, <laughs> I don't give a shit about none of this stuff. Like, yeah. I don't care that that don't make sense. <laughs> like, it just the, goes. Yeah, yeah. This is not a uh, this is not a think piece kind of movie. <laughs> if you're <laughs> no. writing a think piece about Gremlins, rethink your think piece. Right. Um, I I uh, <laughs> yeah no I co-sign. Like, I'm not getting rid of Gremlins. Um, I will say that, like, I never looked at it through the lens of its uh, of those is- errors and of those issues. Um, and I do think they're worth thinking about, given this came out, you know, around the same time as Karate Kid, which also had a similar, uh, you know, thing where, but, but, but handled differently. Um, and so that's there. I'm glad we kind of are able to talk about it. Um, black guy dying first that's i mean you know that's just the thing <laughs> like if we get rid of every movie where that happens then we lose a lot of movies <laughs> um, we do we die first <laughs> right oh that's God. what we do hey that's you black do. you die first it's like the insurance camera <laughs> yeah but uh i i uh i love this movie it's so fun it's so like well like the effects are incredible i'm a sucker for great effects the storytelling is actually really effective from a arc character kind of standpoint uh the logic of the universe is a little wonky like we've <laughs> seen a million questions about what does after midnight actually mean um, <laughs> do time what? zones matter yeah. do like like there's so many like very <laughs> valid questions but why ask them and I'm sure they'll make a they'll they'll do a reboot in 2025 that has a meta commentary about that anyway. So, um, yeah, I love this movie. I'm not saying goodbye to it, um, but you know, I guess classic with a conversation. I don't know. I mean, I, I I think the conversation that we could have about this movie could be had about like a whole slew of movies around that same time period. Um, so maybe it's like you have a conversation about. Asian American representation in eighties films and gremlins <laughs> is one of the bullet points yeah. in that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there it is. That's Hey, we did a holiday special y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I will say that the intent, there was intentionality behind the choice of gremlins because not only do we all love this movie, but it actually ties into a very cool thing that we have coming up. So in January, we are debuting a new series, a new podcast called Survivor's Ed, How to Not Die First in a Horror Movie. And we are talking about horror movies specifically. We're talking about how our black and brown people do in these movies. And we are having a lot of fun. Um, We will debut in January. Uh, If you want more like up to the date news about what's going on with that series and when it's going to drop, Please follow us on Instagram at 2BXM Podcast and uh, check out like some of the content we've already got going up there. Uh, we're having a lot of fun through that uh, through that community that we're building. And we have so many cool things coming up that we're super excited to roll out. So we are going to actually debut a really quick teaser for the new series, Survivor's Ed. And you can watch that now. Essentially a story of survival and a lot of Ice Cube non sequiturs. <laughs> yeah, Wilford Brimley and just a, a really nice cast of dudes starring uh, a dude named Sex Machine. Yes. Why, do, why is everybody so obsessed with covering more ground? What was Saron going to do with that fucking gigantic snake? Who took the major risk with like the holy water, like with the squirt gun? I was like, fam, you brave as a motherfucker because right. <laughs> this is not battle tested at all. 
the characters that are actually like you see their relationship and they're loyal to each other the most are fucking JLo and Ice Cube. They have a common goal and they make it. They're, what we've learned in movies is like nothing living likes to be burnt the fuck up. Like it just does <laughs> n- n- no. There's no movie where the fire doesn't work. In, in order to up your chances of making it, make sure your cast is three entirely different characters that have nothing to do with each other. Weirdly specific <laughs> rule, but please explain. Do the, uh, do, the, do the opposite of what they tell you in life, which is be yourself. Don't don't be yourself. <laughs> don't do that shit. Don't love yourself. Be other people. Be more than yourself. That was a sneak peek at Survivor's Ed, how to not die first in a horror movie. We were super excited to roll that series out in January. Until then, please uh, comment, like, subscribe, share, stay in, the, stay in the community. Let us know what you think of this series. Let us know what you'd like us to cover. This uh, this series will come back. And so we would love to continue the dialogue on this as well. Um, but we just love horror movies. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. And uh, <laughs> we would love for you to join in that conversation with us. See you next time.